Beloved divine friends, family, brothers and sisters, your friend, your brother, me, Haji Dr. Ocean Khan, in another, in a series of In the Raw. In today's uh, newspapers of the 23rd, April, Freddie Kisun, in his column, has put a very interesting article, a column on the turning point, a psychological analysis of Guyana's failed coup d'etat, failed installation of illegal power. But the word he used is not those. He used push, P-U-T-S-C-H, the turning point, a psychological analysis of Guyana's failed P-U-T-S-C-H, push. But technically, the word push in German stands for overthrow. It stands for coup d'etat and a non-bloody overthrow of a government, takeover of a nation. So I want to read his article to you, dear friends and families. From now, way into the future, the March 2020 rigged election will be remembered and discussed. Some dimensions will be the center of attention, but over time will be will become banal. These dimensions will center on Claudette Shane, Claremont, Mingo, Keith Lowenfield, GCOM Secretariat, and David Granger as the key players. Missing for years and years to come are some deeply complex aspects of the March 2020 disaster. Shall the historian and social scientists write about it in the foreseeable future and omit crucial, invisible complexities of the five-month Faustian journey. It is hoped this column is a tiny contribution to focusing on some illumination on these hidden dimensions. His aim is to really touch on something here that's historical, dynamic, and very brilliant. And his aim also is that hope that some of us will be able to get the idea of the wisdom that he's trying to share. Why was the PNC not successful in staying in power? The answer lies in the psychology of Claudette Singh. There is nothing from March 4th when Mingo began inventing numbers that the researcher could find to make people think that he did. The PNC did not want to hold on to power. Okay? Technically, he's trying to say that when Mingo started doing all of these uh, nonsensicalities, a researcher in the future looking backwards would think that the PNC was not interested in power. Let us listen to his view. You know, Freddie Kisun is a man that I have a lot of respect for. I don't share all of his commentaries um, and his viewpoints. And we have to have differences of opinion. But technically, I like the man for his bravery. And I think it's time that the maddest man for journalism, political, analytical capacities, talents and abilities and his patriotism and that he will go after any government in power whether he supported them or not like the EFC and the APNU he went after them very shortly after because they betrayed him and the wisdom and the thought with which they were founded so to say everything was planned to rig and cling power hoping future negotiations with the PVP as demanded by the powerful CARICOM and Western governments would not cancel the tenure of the APNU and AFC. That is what his viewpoint as an analyst is seeing, that they were doing all of that with the hope that there would have been some kind of a negotiation to have some kind of a power. So why the PNC could not have held on to power even though the police force was prepared to assist. Before we begin the psychological analysis, a quick reference should be made to one of the great mysteries of the human thinking. And now we're going to his political wisdom and expertise. Um, and remember, this is the thoughts of Freddie Kisun, some of which I find interesting and caused me to want to share this for, for Guyanese who would like to really understand the minds of the rigors of what was the aim behind it. Let's go on. At the height of the Nazi Germany successful conquest of Europe, Hitler's deputy flew a plane, landed in enemy territory, Britain, was captured and jailed until he died in solitary confinement decades later. 
Why did Rudolf Hilf Hilf do such an inscrutable thing? People's psychology is never fixed. This is why a moment you might have an employee who is honorable and good and professional and the next thing you know, he becomes deceitful, conspiratorial and try to damage the employer. I've had many cases like that where people's psychology suddenly turned. It was Freud who wrote that we should not refer to human nature because each human has a different cluster of factors that make up what we call human nature. Each one of us, according to Freud, as he's quoting, is saying that. We cannot say human nature is so because each one of us are different. Some are very animalistic, cruel, brutish, and so on. Yet still animalistic could be um, herd mentality, working in group for defense, sharing fruits and meat and benefits for group benefits and so on. So animal nature is not always a bad thing. Uh, for example, I go, I go out a little bit. When we go to the seawall, human beings, most people have a tendency when they finish their, their religious ceremonies or whatever, leaving the nastiness, the plastics and the dirt there. Their food and, the, and, and you don't also go to have fun and the plastic bottles and all the nastiness. But the animals doesn't do that. So sometimes being animal is a compliment. A person's psychology undergoes transformation depending on the circumstances that person is surrounded by. Let me read that. A person's psycho psychology undergoes transformation depending on the circumstances that the person is surrounded by. The PNC could not have held on to power because the key person it entrusted to pave the way for the putsch, the overthrow, the putsch. I don't know if pronouncing the word right, P-U-T-S-C-H. <laughs> And I'm usually good in this. The person at the PNC entrusted to pave the way for the overthrow or take over of a government or a coup d'etat had a psychological metamorphosis, Claudette is saying. He is saying Claudette was the one they had in mind who would have helped them to have this. But she underwent a psychological metamorphosis or a change. Like how the worm goes through a metamorphosis and becomes the butterfly, for those who don't understand. So she went through a metamorphosis, a psychological change, a factor, um, a cluster of factors in psychology in the human mind that caused her to go, went undergo a switcheroo, so to say. Claudette Singh. There is no question in my mind that Singh had agreed to accept GCOM's fraudulent figures of an APNU and AFC victory on Thursday, March 6th. I was there, ladies and gentlemen. I concur. She was ready and there was some kind of a conspiracy for her to keep the PNC APNU AFC in power. When Mingo stood with her and tried to declare the numbers for Region 4, when all hell broke loose. There is no question in my mind, all the bureaucratic procedures were in place for a GCOM declaration the next day. But the situations kept changing rapidly put an enormous strain on the psychology of Singh and David Granger. The beginning of Singh's mental strain was on the very Thursday when the PPP got three injunctions to stop GCOM's acceptance of the number of Mingo's fictional figures. Here is where Singh and Granger began to feel the mental pressure. I, I, I concur, ladies and gentlemen, I was there <laughs> and some of them were hiding from the injunctions. Um, making it difficult to be served. That was there. But when the injunction was about to come, the, she locked herself up. And some of us thought she was being kidnapped technically, but she locked herself up in her chambers at that Compton station at Ashman's building. But the pressure now after the injunction came started to create mental confusion in the minds of uh, then President Granger, now opposition now um, leader of the People's National Congress and uh, Claudette Singh. They started to waver. Keep going. The beginning of Singh's mental strain was on the very Thursday when the PPP got three injunctions to stop GCOM. And then we discussed that part about, about the mental pressure. The PNC thought that Singh would have gone ahead and still declared the results because there was a plan to get Singh and Lowenfield to hide, thus avoid being served. And we know that they were hiding from being served so that she will declare um, it. But even though Singh was not served, 
she still accepted to halt an official GCOM proclamation giving APNU AFC a victory. She stopped it because she knew her dignity, her honor throughout the world as a, as a justice of the nation, a retired justice of the nation of high caliber would be remembered with disgrace and degradation. But even though Singh was not served, she still accepted to halt an official GCOM proclamation of a PNC victory, even though she wasn't served, they were hiding. Why did she do that? One factor explains it. Singh felt compelled by her personal history to observe the High Court ruling because she was a High Court and Court of Appeal judge. These things influence people's psychology. In her mind, she felt the judicial system was close to her heart and she should accept it. So that's the psychology that metamorphosized within her and caused her to cancel the proclamation of the APNU AFC as powers. But just as Singh was feeling mental strain, so was Granger. When Singh accepted the three injunctions, the PNC became confused. They had to wait for another opportunity to get Singh to help them. They're creating all kinds of shenanigans. Ladies and gentlemen, I was there. Put us out. Throw us out. Um, uh, insult, humiliate us. The, the deputy CEO of GCOM acted, telling, pick your rubbish and, and leave. Very disgraceful and constantly she was with that rubbish thing. Her name and her video and her pictures goes around the world and I was responsible, brothers and sisters, Haji, Roshan Khan, for much of that. I had to stand up and blast. I couldn't have sat down and allowed the theft of a nation, a push or a coup d'etat. A coup d'etat is a bloodless overthrow of a government to take place, for those who don't know. They had to wait for another opportunity to get Singh to help them. Friday, March 10th was the beginning of a psychological breakdown of both Singh and Granger and a breakdown in the relationship between Granger and Singh. Granger got desperate and decided to close shop by getting Mingo to do to do on Friday, March 10th at GCOM head office in Kingston, a repeat of what he did the week before at GCOM's command center. <laughs> and we know what was there, so he wanted him to do it all over again. The idea was to do a burnum on the Chief Justice. <laughs> when the Constitution required Burnham to do something, he would do it in his own twisted, illogical way and declare, I comply and the with the Constitution and the law. So this is what Granger was trying to do to get a, re a kind of a refiguring thing with that dirty bedsheet and a projector on the wall. So Mingo was instructed to do his repetition. And Jacob would say that he complied with the injunctions, it meant uh, that he complied with the injunctions. It meant uh, that on Saturday, March 11th, Granger was to be sworn in. Things were put in place. Security was in place. Everybody was in place. But by this time, Singh had become a, a different lady. She did not call a GCOM meeting to declare the crooked results. Why? Because the metamorphosis of the cluster of factors in psychology, in her mind, as Freddie Kisun so beautifully put it. Singh nor the PNC envisioned the unforeseen circumstances would, that would envelope them on Thursday. And friends and family, I'm telling you, I personally, yours truly, I know there were many wonderful people there fighting for democracy. I was one of them. I stood up and I know I made a big tent and I did about a 75 to 80 presentations on RK's guy in a free media that went around the world viral that captured the imagination of people and inspired many others to do the same. I played, I know, I played a very important role in this reality, ladies and gentlemen, friends and families. The plan was for GCOM to, to use the fictional figures after Mingo did his region force called Doggery and declare the results, but the three injunctions had hit Singh hard. And this, according to Freddie Kisun, is to be continued. So, part two to come sometime in the future, friends and family, brothers and sisters, the push or the overthrow of a government by non-violent means did not take, take place. Your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan, in the raw. Say thank you, I'm